and they. Hello all. Thank you for having me again at Dynamics One. It's a great honor as there are so many great speakers and presenters presenting this time. So thank you community for voting my sessions. And today we'll be talking about uh, top 10 tips for business center users, developers, and administrators. A quick introduction about myself. My name is Swarabh Dhani. I have approximately 11 years of experience with Dynamics Lab and Business Center. And I'm in Microsoft MVP from 2014. I work for Archipoint as Upgrade Technical Futurist. My role is to focus on what's coming new in the product as the product keeps on changing every six months and how we can utilize these new capabilities that are being introduced in the product for our customers. So let's start by seeing what we'll cover today. So we'll be talking about four tips for the users. There are three tips for administrators and then three tips for developers. If time permits, then I might spend some time on some bonus tips which are available there. Otherwise, we can always discuss about those tips in Q&A. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in Q&A and I'll, I'll take notes and we'll discuss about at the end of the session. So let's start with top tips for users. So the first tip that we are going to talk about today is a feature called teaching tip, which is introduced in Business Central 2020 release wave one. Now, how you utilize teaching tip is as a onboarding tool for your new users and colleagues that join your organization. As a business solution, it sometimes gets trickier to explain new onboarding staff what these fields are, how this process execute, what these different actions in the application do. I'm pretty sure that you or someone else in your organization is doing that part. With Business Central 2021 release wave one and higher, you can actually add teaching tips in different parts of your Business Central application. So you can have these te teaching tips on base Microsoft pages, or on custom pages which are built for you with your partner or your in-house developer. The teaching tip can also be extended. Microsoft provides some basic, basic teaching tips, but with the help of your partner or an in-house developer, you can actually extend, and it's pretty easy to extend teaching tips in the center. And we'll see a demo of it once we cover all these. Let's move to the tip number two, which is around word merge. Now, if you are a user that has used NAV in the past, there were some basic capabilities with the word merge, which was available back in NAV. With Business Center 2021 release wave one, Microsoft have brought this word merge feature in a more advanced and a simple way to extend. Now, how you utilize word merge feature as a user? So Microsoft Word template can make it easier when you have to do a mass communication with different entities which are available in Business Center. Just for example, if you want to send a personalized message to each of your customers, that's the point where you use word merge feature. Or you want to send a greetings to all your vendors. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to utilize when you see it, how easy it is in your organization. In the base Microsoft, it is available in very few base pages, like on vendors, customers, and if I'm not wrong, also on the contacts. But it's not so hard to apply the same template on any other page or any other record in your system where you think that you can utilize the word template feature. And it's not just limited for the mass communication or 
you know generating a, a template for all the records in that table you can also use it with the help of a developer to use that word template that you have saved to send an email to your customer if required so there are so many options available with the word merge that you should be able to utilize in your in your daily work now let's move to tip number three which is around inventory receipts and supply now this is a new feature that is again added in 2020 release wave one and anybody who have dealt with inventory in past or if it's part of your job the only way to adjust inventories in nav or business central was limited to item journey that option is still relevant and still available in the product but to make system alike microsoft have introduced these two documents in the system which are inventory receipts and inventory shipments you can use these documents to adjust the inventories of your item uh, it's also able to cap uh, to print these document if required there are no reports available from microsoft for these two documents but your partner or if you have an in-house developer you can surely build these reports around these documents and microsoft have kept or extended the options in report selection so that you can develop your custom report and plug them into the report selection menu so that you are able to run them it also gives you an easy way to kind of uh, post adjustments or doing positives and uh, transfers and all uh, positive and negative adjustments into the system it works like any other document page anything that is set on the header will also apply on the lines as it happens on your sales documents purchase document so there are more features that are available with inventory receipts and shipment as i said in the beginning the item journal option still exists and it will remain as it is but there's a new way to do it the other benefit of using inventory receipts and shipment is it stores us as a history of the transaction that has been done so when you post a positive adjustment or an item uh, inventory adjustment from item journal it doesn't store the history of transaction that has been made but with inventory shipments and receipts there are actually posted inventory shipment and receipt which uh, you know stores the info once the document is posted and the facility of copying the document from already posted shipments and receipt is also available in in this new feature that's added now let's move to our tip number 4 which is around enhanced email now if you have not noticed and if you are not using business center 2020 release wave 2 or higher there is a huge uh, change in how emails are now uh, you know that feature has been enhanced with 2020 release wave 2 now the one of the thing that has been changed is how the email look like on your on your screen when when you trying to send in Let's say sales code or a purchase order to a to a customer or your vendor. If you look at the screen, it has capability to show you from where it is going. There is a full window where you can generate your message. There is a huge enhancement in how you format your email. So all formatting capabilities are available with enhanced email. So you get bold, italic, underline, and all those capabilities which are available on a full fledged email editor inside the center the one more request that most of the customers had was to that nav of the central always limited to have attachment now with this enhanced email there is no limit you can attach as many documents until unless your exchange supports it which is nothing for the central it allow you to attach as many documents as you want and then there are other capabilities which you'll see during the demo but at the another one uh, feature which is added in the enhanced email was one another major uh, request from the community which is around the sender email id now 
before Business Center 2020 release wave two, all the emails were sent by one generic ID, which you set on SMTP mail setup. With enhanced email, you have possibility to assign different scenarios and define who will be the sender for those scenarios so that you can club your different scenarios and use different email IDs for scenarios. Just to take an example, if you want to send all your sales document using, let's say a sales ID, you can use that. And you want a different email ID for a purchase, uh, all your purchase emails, you can use a different email ID and, and so on and so forth. And we'll see that. So let me just switch to my demo and we'll see all these features in the center. Okay. So the first tip that we saw was around the teaching tip. Now, if you look at the standard Microsoft teaching tip that's available, let's say in posted sales and voice page. So if there is a new user, the new user gets a pop-up like this, which gives a title that's uh, what's happening or what this page is about, and then give a small description of that. And you can choose to take two and once you choose to take two, it will walk you to the fields where Microsoft have defined the teaching tip for different fields, which gives you what this field is and why this field is used in Business Center. You can keep on moving next and it'll keep on showing you what teaching tips are added by Microsoft on this page. And as you can see, it's not just limited to the fields that are available on the page, it can also be set on the actions that you have on your page. So you can actually click and see that this teaching tip is for this action here and gives you an info what it does. And then once you've completed it, if you visit again, this page, which is posted sales and voice, the system will remember that you have seen the teaching tip but if you still want to visit that tip again, you can click or hover over here and it'll give you an option to retake the tool. But as I said in the beginning, it's not limited to what Microsoft is providing you as a partner, dev, uh, as partners and as a developer, in-house developer can easily extend this feature on a page like I have done on the customer list page. So this is my teaching tip for my customer and any user that comes here can take a tool of this teaching tip and see why all these different fields are being used in the system. So it automatically navigates to, to the next field and gives you a brief description of why this field is. And then also you can see different reports or actions which I have extended using the AL programming language. And then you can always retake tools once you think that your new person who have joined you have already completed uh, his training, they can always go into my settings and disable the teaching tip. Now, once they disable the teaching tip, uh, the teaching tip will not be prompted for them if it bothers them. In, in that case, you can just disable the teaching tip. Okay. So the next thing that we saw was the word merge, the mail merge. So let's quickly see a small demo of it. So let's say I'm on, on my windows and I want to assume that I'm a, I'm a nav or a business center partner and all these windows, I need to get info of what all ISVs solution extension they have. So I just want to send an email or do it to generate a Word template using Word template generate a mail format, Word merge format for these selected vendor. And you can do it for all, for one or for multiple. And then when you come to actions, there will be an option of Word template. I have already created a Word template. You can have multiple templates per page if you want, or per record. But let's assume that we want to use it. Click next. There are different output formats that you can use, which is docs, doc, PDF, 
HTML or text based on whatever you want. And then you can either generate it as a single document for all these vendors, which makes no sense. So you can split the document based on the vendor in this case or in the case of customers. Per record, you can have one document. But for the demo, I'm just using one single document and we click next and we say finish and to the center you will download the output of the word template like this where this is coming from business center uh, this is coming from business center and in the same way for each vendor it generated a separate page where we want some info from those vendors I'm pretty sure you'll be able to utilize it but as I said while we are talking about it that it is not just limited to where Microsoft provides it with if you know with very minimum effort you can add it let's say on let me go to locations so just for the demo if I want a word template on the blue and green location I have already added an action word template and when I click on it, it'll generate a PDF based on whatever uh, the mail merge functionality I have used and will show me the details. So all these fields are coming from Business Central and they'll be filled in wherever they are filled in in Business Central. And also the location name or the warehouse name is coming from Business Central. So that's a capability that's available with the mail merge and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to utilize it. And if you have any questions, please keep on uh, adding them into the chat and we'll talk about them. Next we discussed about inventory receipts and shipment. So if you search for inventory receipts, we can create new receipts here. So if you click new, that will give you a document look like view where you can select different parameters here and then in the lines you can add items you also have options to add dimensions to your inventory receipts and salesperson and other things you can release post post and print you can use the release and reopen functionality if you want you can print if you have created a custom report and if you want, let's quickly look into inventory shipments. I'll have one developed. Inventory shipments. So this is an inventory shipment which is already created where I'm trying to uh, add or ship 10 items. So that's this. And if you have to create a new, you can always use the functionality of copy document which can which will allow you to copy it from posted, posted shipments or posted receipt or an open shipment or an open receipt. So the history is maintained you can use uh, the similar kind of document if you want to use uh, again by using the copy document feature and that will allow you to show uh, the values that are there. Okay. The next thing that we talked about is enhanced email. So let's quickly look at that. So with enhanced email, you first set up your email accounts. Now email accounts, like I've said, uh, I have set up some fake accounts and one of my personal account, and then you can mark one as default. Now, as I said that you can use different email IDs to different kinds of emails. So if I attach all my sales document scenarios to the sales email id which i can just do from here using email scenarios and then i can assign scenarios which is let's say when i send a sales invoice sales order sales code sales credit memo anytime a user sends an email from any of these pages the sender id will be used as sales at rate org.com or for purchase if you want to attach you can attach these different scenarios to these emails and they will be used as the sender email address 
when the emails are sent out from the center. Now let's quickly look on one of the email that we might have. Okay. So if I want to send this email, I go into email confirmation. The system calculates, generates the output, attaches the document, and gives you this page. And if you notice, the from email ID is sales at the rate org.com based on the scenario that I attached to. And then this email body is coming from the word layout or the word layout that is saved in the center and at the end there is an attachment area there are all formatting options as i said and additionally if you have any attachments on your document like in this case in the sales order you can use this get source attachment and that will attach all those files here so if i do a get source attachment we'll choose what files i want and those will be attached to the scheme. So you don't have to manually pick the file and select it. If it is attached on the document, that can be sent as an attachment. Now, as I said, it's a full-fledged email when you try to close it. It can either be stored in an outbox or you can just discard that email and click OK. Once you go back to your home page, you can see how many emails are in outbox, how many are in draft, and how many has been sent in the last 30 days. So that gives you full-fledged uh, options of uh, emailing within Business Center. So I hope that's clear. And if you have any other questions on it, keep adding them in the chat. And we'll take talk about them as we go forward. OK, so now let's move to tips for administrator. Now, as an administrator of Business Central, there are things that have been changing. Either you are on-prem or either you are using Business Central online. The space of your database is, is always important, either you are using online or not. So we'll talk about some of those factors or features which are available for administrator to keep an eye on the space that is being consumed by the records that or the transaction that have been done in Business Central. At the same time, we'll also spend some time into some key areas that administrators should limit which users can access or not. So the first tip that I have for administrator is about the retention policy that's available. So the retention policy feature retains talks about what will be retained in the database for how long time. So like you have seen, there are some tables also available in the base Microsoft or the central solution, which are just for logging purposes, like chain log entries and others like these outbox email or send emails. Your custom extension that has been built by your partner may have such tables that just storing a log of entries that has been processed from the system. And we need to keep an eye as an administrator on what's being added and how long we want to retain that info for the business. I understand that for some areas you need that info for a longer time, but for certain areas we can surely delete certain info. So the retention policies allows you to define which tables you can you you know you can automatically schedule to be delete, record deletion after a fixed retention period that you have defined. There's a little bit of code or an extension that need to be developed to add a ISV or a extension table into this. So you'll have to talk to your partner or the developer who is building on it to make sure that any log tables that they are building in the solution should be available in the retention policy page. So we'll see a demo of it in a while. The next tip around for the tip, uh, administrator is around field monitoring. Now, for all these years in NAV and Business Central, we have relied on chain log entry to see who have changed what info and when and what was the previous value of it 
and what what is the value when it is changed now that all looks good but then it needs a event to happen when somebody will have to go and review who changed and when changed but at the same time there might be some sensitive field which you want to be notified as soon as they are changed and that's where the field monitoring comes into the picture where you can define the fields that you want to be notified about and it's up to you either you want to be notified about them and if yes then you can send as an email or you can just keep on monitoring like change log to see who is changing those fields so if you choose the option to be notified you get an email something like this that you are supposed to uh, receive an email whenever somebody changes the value of prevent negative inventory and it talks about what was the old value what is the new value and who changed it and when it was changed so all those options are available but as i said we should be using it only for the fields which are very important for the business that any change on those set of fields or specific fields user or administrator need to be notified then they should be using the field monitoring feature in business center don't do it for all the fields otherwise your emails you will get a lot of emails from the business let's move to the next step which is around feature management now feature management is not a new concept for business center but it has been added for a while and this is how microsoft is trying to add new capabilities into the product either in a major update or in a minor update so some new features you can enable ahead of time in your sandbox or on your production environment or if you are on on prem then on test or on production environment what's the feature it enable which is in the future and we'll talk about it so Uh, the new capabilities will be added into the product using this page called feature management and this is the time where uh, administrators with you know with discussion with their partner can decide that should they enable that feature or not this is the time frame that they have to test that feature like email announcement is a feature which is available as of today to be enabled or disabled but in the next release it will be it will not be an option so during this period it is not a beta version of that uh, feature it's actually a fully tested developed feature in the center but because your custom solution that you have built may have dependency with the old model microsoft is providing you this time frame where you can test those dependencies and fix that code before at this point it becomes the only option to use that feature now if you see there are so many listed here and keep a note on this field called automatically enable from now this is the date when this feature will be the only way of doing certain things so like if i see here that email capabilities feature is going to be automatically enable on q4 of 2021 which is the next release so after that time after q4 of 2021 this these all these records will be removed and there might be new addition in the feature management list now that all sounds non admin task but think about a situation where you don't limit who can access this page your users can come and enable certain features now there are some of the features which are reversible so that they can be turned off once they are enabled and you can't just turn it on for one user and be enabled for everybody but there are few which are irreversible so you need to make sure that who sees what and you can as an administrator control it using a permission set called feature management admin so that will limit your users actual users to access this so we'll see a demo of it or see it in the product in a while but let's move next and talk about it for developer 
Now, administrators, if you have any questions, drop them into Q&A panel and we'll talk about it at the end. So as I'm talking for developers, there are certain scenarios or things that we need to keep in mind while we are developing solution. And as I'm part of the upgrade team, we bring most of the legacy code into the future. So our responsibility is to make sure that that code is not just compiling, but it's written in a way that is more optimized or more performance improved in the in the latest and the greatest version of the product. As you all understand with the business central, when we talk about performance and other things, there are very key part is around development. Because in, in Business Central Online, that's the only area that we can efficiently write our code and make sure that the code execution is faster. So I'll start my first tip for developers with partial records. Now partial record is a capability in Business Central that allows developer to load a subset of field from a table instead of loading the whole table itself. Now, if you remember when Microsoft introduced Business Central and the AL model was introduced, there was a lot talked about uh, the performance of the code that will be writing because of introduction of table extension and how the SQL will be able to join these different references to show the output that I want to show to the users. And that's where as a developer, partial record comes into picture. So you can take a legacy code, which I, as part of my job as an upgrade team member, uh, we have this responsibility to bring this code from legacy, but not just compile it, but make sure that it is adopting to the new uh, code writing structure that are available in the center. And it's written in a way that supports more performance. So in a typical example, when you do a select of a table record, by using your find set or find first in, in your AL code. And if your item ledger and the table in this case have three extension, then a query behind the scene goes something like this, which is select all the fields from the main table, which is item ledger entry, and also select all the fields from all the extensions that are built on the item ledger. Now we all as a developer understand that the slow and user will not see record, fetch records that he or she wanted in a timely fashion. But using partial record, you can change this SQL query to something like this, whereas the selected record from the tables that you want, so you just select the fields that you want, and it will give you the, the records in, you know, in less time. So keep an eye on it, and I'll, I'll show you demo after this. The another key addition that's uh, for the developer is now with business center, there's a capability added that you can add fields if you need for to improve performance on the base Microsoft tables using table extension. Now there is a technical limitation around what you can and what you cannot. And just by explaining the simple situation that you can add a key on the base Microsoft table, which is this table, where I have added a key 50,000, which is a key based on all the fields which are from the base Microsoft table. Or I can add a separate key where all the fields from that key are only part of the table extension. But there is no way that you can create a key where one of the field is from table extension and all other fields are from the base Microsoft table, but that's not how it works. So keep an eye on when you're creating keys and uh, there is a way that if you think your code needs a key, you can always add that. The last tip for the developer is around snapshot debug. So if you have worked on Business Central Online and if you are in a situation where you need to debug something in production, you cannot do it in uh, Business Central Online because an operation on a production environment pausing that or debugging that is not good or it doesn't make sense to do it there. And that's where snapshot debugging comes into the picture. Now in theory, how snapshot debugging works is you initiate your snapshot debugging, you define a configuration using AL programming, 
once you have defined the configuration, you initialize the debugging scenario. You request your user to replicate the issue that he or she is facing. And once they have completed the replication of the issue, you just finish your debugging, snapshot debugging process, and then you can debug the whole uh, issue or the whole process offline without interacting to the production environment. So it downloads all the file, all the symbols which are recorded. It even saves the variables, uh, you know, if you put the debugger points there, it remembers the records and all. So it gives you a way where you can debug offline. So before we get into the demo of these, and if time permits, we'll go there. I just want to show you these are the additional tips that I was talking in the beginning, which is about you can do certain things in Business Central which was not available or which you might have customized in past in your NAV or Business Central version, which you should have a look at because these are super cool features which are available. Like you, I'm pretty sure those who have been using NAV and switched to Business Central recently, they might have done a customization where they want item to description view to be popular when they say it's sort of exposed to. Now, you don't need that kind of customization because that's now just based on the setup in the system. So keep an eye on these and utilize these features. And let's go and see some of the demos around these features, which I was talking about. So let's quickly go and see the retention policies which I was talking about. So you can, uh, you'll see all the base Microsoft table which Microsoft defined that you can uh, retain or not retain. And in this simple setup, you just need to select the table. And as I said, for any custom table in your extension, you'll have to go to the developer or partner to add that table to be allowed in the retention policy. And then you can define retention period. And based on that period, it will be deleted by default system will consider the age of the record based on the system created at feed but if you have a custom field based on which you want to calculate the date you can use a lookup and choose the field that you want. you can define your own retention periods if you need that's just a date formula and based on that those records will be deleted the same now we were talking about um, the, the legacy code or the partial records that you are seeing. Now, I have created a small demo around legacy code. So, if you run a legacy code and a time permits, I'll show you. It execute, it'll take some time to execute that code in the center. And let's see, it's still executing when I click on it. And this is the actual code, more or less, from in NAV 2009. And I brought it as it is in the business entry version and just ran it. And it took just with this dummy data on 178886 second. Now, we haven't talked about it, developers, but there is something called as auto cancel free, which is available even in the Dynamics Lab versions. So, if in your calculation, if there is a flow field that you know will slow down your process, use auto cancel free where you can. And if you use that auto cancel free, the same code, which I'll, I'll show you if required, or it's available on the GitHub, which I put. The execution time has reduced drastically. But if you use partial record, it'll even reduce drastically because now it's not fetching all the fields, it's only fetching the set of the fields which are required to execute the score. So that was around that. And what else? We have seen inventory shipments, and we have seen this change log. We have seen the performance testing. And let me quickly jump and show you that code which I was talking about, which is here. Okay. So I hope you can see this. Now, this is the legacy code, which I was just trying to run with option one, which is just a calculation of item ledger entry certain fields using the Calci field, the older book. Now, the similar code, if you write with the auto cancel field, you can define it at the beginning and it'll just calculate. That has a drastic improvement in the performance, if you remember, while we execute that. And the last but not least, 
I also added a command, a single line command, to field, but I just included the field which I wanted in my calculation here. And that also had an impact in the source code. I was talking about snapshot even. If you have to see this, you can walk through the session. And then if you see, it also stores all the steps. I had created an issue where it is showing all the steps that have created this problem and will also show you all the debugging capabilities of that. When you go into the debug window, it will show you where it is being called, what is the issue. So all those problems, all those variables you can see without logging or debugging your production environment, which is something that we are discussing. Okay. So if you have any questions during when you have seen all this, and I'm running a little bit faster because of the time, drop them in chat and we'll talk about it. That's all for my session. I'm super excited to be presenting here, and I'm pretty sure um, I'll be able to, these tips will be able to help whatever you do uh, in your daily job. And if you have any questions, feel free to add them in chat. I'll answer them after this. And if you want to contact me, these are my contact details. You can visit me or connect me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, I meet with the community once in a week an event called DC Open Discussion. If you want to join that and talk about the recent, I'll be happy to talk about it. So again, thank you, Dynamics Khan, and thank you, community, for selecting my topic and giving me an opportunity to present at Dynamics Khan. Thank you. So how was the session? you like the content? It's good. I, I'm pretty excited about some of those new features. OK. Do we have any questions at this point? I think we had four. OK. That's good. So the first one was uh, in a Word template, uh, will it be having a data source the same as the normal report? Yeah, and it's more easier than report. So what happens when you try to set up a new Word template it gives you an Excel file with all the fields available in that particular table, and also a Word file, which automatically understand that Excel file as a source for the merge field. And then you can develop your template and you know add things that you wanted there. And then you just upload that template back into the center. So it's super easy uh, how you can utilize that. Great, and then the next one was, uh, will customized email functionality select the email automatically for particular documents, or do we need to write separate code for that? Uh, so and maybe I'm, I understood it. Let me let me assume what, what the question is trying to say, that if you want to add an email functionality on a particular business area where it is not available from Microsoft, then how the sender ID will depend. And the answer would be that if you haven't seen it behind the scene, the whole email functionality is now written on interface. So while you'll be extending the interface for uh, adding your custom functionality, you can also extend the interface where you can add the scenario that you want so that that scenario can be used while trying to pick that uh, sender address for that particular document. So that's a good example where the interface is making our life easier yes. as a developer. Yeah. And then uh, next question we had is, as far as permissions, can you set them with groups and assign it to users depending on their access level? Yes. And that's where the user groups comes into picture in Business Center. So you can define different user groups and then assign one or multiple users to a specific user group, which will have some specific permission in the application. So that's completely possible that you can define different user groups and then assign those user groups to users. Well, that's definitely another one that's making our, our life easier. You know, those yeah. groups was a big change, a big change for the, the better as far as organizing permissions for users. And then the, right. the last question we had from the chat was regarding, you know, primary keys. So uh, there's no way to extend the primary key of the base app other than 
you know, doing the thing that we at Archer Point don't recommend, modifying the base app itself? Yes. So, yeah, it's not possible to extend the primary key. And as Joe was saying, we don't recommend you to modify base app. As in, uh, we haven't seen and maybe we, uh, you know, we haven't been exposed to a scenario where uh, your custom process cannot be run without modifying the base primary key. But I'll still suggest to rethink about that process and rewrite is as you might have attended Waldo's session yesterday where he talked about it, that you might have to rethink about that custom and do it in a way so that it can be evented and you don't have to modify anything base because it's it adds a huge cost to maintain a customized base application from Microsoft, right? Yeah, so that's a great example of where we maybe look less at what is that legacy code and more about what is the goal of that code and how can we achieve right. it. Now, I see one more question about how do you make uh, table ex uh, extend ta tables from extension in the retention policy. And you actually have to add a code in your uh, extension as an install code. And I just put a link of the GitHub where uh, the, all the source code that was shown in this demo is available. So you can just go there. Um, all the source code is kind of segregated in different folders. So you, you'd be easily able to find out how you do that. It's just adding one install part to kind of add that table into allow table list. I see one more, which is, can you please walk through about Enhance email demo? I'm wondering if you can assign multiple email addresses to a scenario. Um, actually, you cannot. You cannot assign multiple users to one scenario. And, uh, uh, you know, that's how it is at this I point. guess the closest we could get, Sarah, would be to use that scenario, that scenario that's send as user or that user scenario where it would yes. use their email account, but to not just a specific set, it would be any user in that scenario, right? Yeah. Now, let me see on the chat right now. And uh, if you are interested in the additional tips that there was just a slide there, just watch this session on YouTube. I just put it here. That's just a continuation of this session. And uh, uh, let me see. Uh, for the word template functionality, are there any layouts available? Uh, no, it starts with blank, and then you can define uh, whatever the format that you want with your logos, your pictures, and whatever the template you want for that document. So it always starts fresh. Okay, can you confirm table keys again? Uh, are you saying that next? So as in we have to wrap up, there is no much time, but I'll be happy to talk more about it into the virtual watch parties. So join us there if you have time and I can surely answer any additional questions if they are there. So thanks, Joe, and thank you, Dynamics Con. Thanks.